Okay, so there's one really important skill in InDesign that everybody should know and it really only takes like two minutes if you have done everything properly in your design. And that is the ability to package your document. And what that means is if I was to send this to a professional printer, um, they need to be able to not just have my original InDesign file, but they should have a PDF of that file in case it's ready to go and they just wanna print it. And they need to also have that um, the ability to go in and edit it, which is why they need the InDesign file. But the problem is they might not have like this font. I know for sure my printer doesn't have Glory Night Tall, but even Helvetica or Arial or Times New Roman, you never know if they have those fonts on their computer or not. And so if they go in to edit, let's say a typo that they found in here um, and they don't have the font, then they're gonna have to contact you, get that font, or if your embedded images or your images, I'm sorry, that are not embedded, if all of a sudden they're pixelated because they're not embedded, they're gonna have to contact you to get those um, images. So what does that mean for you? Well, that means more billable hours. So it's gonna cost you more if you do not build this file correctly and send it to them as a package. So you always wanna make sure that you send your final version as a package. And what that does is it creates um, the InDesign file again and puts it in a, a project folder. It creates an IDML file it creates a PDF file, and then it actually puts all of the fonts that you used in here, like from the basic regular style font to the italic version of that font, to the bold version of that font, to an, the other fonts that you might have in here. It puts them all in the folder, and then any images you have in the document, it's gonna go out and find it. So like right here, you can see that I have four, actually there's five, three images in here, and then two of the same logo in here. And if I look at my project file, not that one, this one, sorry. If I look at this project file, you can see that I see the three images here, but I don't see that logo for the college. And that means that that logo is in some different folder somewhere. So if I were to send these graphics to my printer, they would come back and tell me they need my logo files, which again is gonna add another billable hour. So I can already tell that this one is not ready to send to a printer. Um, and in order to package it, you just have to basically click a button and it does it all for you. So I'm gonna show you in a simplified version. Every computer usually has Arial and Times New Roman, so I just wanted to use those two so you can see that it still packages those fonts for the printer in case they don't have it. And then this image, you can tell in the links panel, this is the image that's here, and this little link icon is telling you that it's not embedded into the document. You could embed it into the document, but it's gonna make your file size huge. Um, so the better idea is to just put it in your document and then create a package at the end. Okay, so now when I'm done with my file, I need to save it. So I haven't made any changes, so it's already saved. And if you don't save it before you do the package, it actually warns you and says it needs to be saved. So you don't have to worry there. And you're gonna to go to file and choose package. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna tell you that you've used two fonts in this document, which you can see. There's no missing or embedded or incomplete or protected fonts. And then for the images, it says there's one link found, which we can see here. And that one link, that's why we have a caution here, is it's using an RGB color space, which if you're sending it to a professional printer, um, you actually want it to be CMYK because their big printers are using actual CMYK ink. If, however, you're just sending it like to uh, Kinko's or something like that, well, actually, they probably use CMYK2 to ink too. Actually, I'm not sure. So, but most, like, if you're just sending it to your desktop printer, which then you wouldn't need to do a package, you could just print this document or the PDF, um, they, you can use the RGB color space, but in general, you should have this as CMYK if you're sending it to a professional printer or if you're having, if you're paying for it to be printed. Okay, so you do that just by taking that photo into Photoshop and changing the color mode to CMYK, save it, and then put it back into your document here. Okay, so pretending that doesn't have an issue there, you can come through here and it's telling you, like if you had a lot of images in here, it'll tell you which ones are RGB so that you can go and fix them. And then this is where you can see uh, other information about the print. But generally you just have to come here, make sure there's no warnings, and then just hit package. So it's gonna put it in a folder with the same file name. You can change the file name here, but just know you cannot change it after that. If you change the, the folder um, 
name after that, then all the links inside of that folder break and it causes problems. So in general, I just don't mess with this and I make sure to have a good file name before I actually do this. So I'll go ahead and hit package and here's the original InDesign file. Now you can see it created this test folder and inside that folder, I'll go ahead and change my view options so that it's a little bit easier to see. All right, so when you look here, it created the another version of the InDesign file. It created an IDML file, a PDF file. It added the two fonts I have in here, and this is just always gonna go in there no matter what. And then we have the links, any images that are linked in here. So this is really important because now what I would do is I would take this folder and I would compress it or zip it, and I would send this zip file to my printer or I would just put it in a Google Drive and in Google Drive I actually can just drag the folder without zipping it so that that's a just a tip. So let's go ahead and see what happens if I do something more complicated. So again you can see there's a lot of text, a lot of different fonts, a lot of images that are happening in here and we saw that we don't see the logo file in this particular um, folder. So again let's just change this so we can see bigger. Okay, so now again when I go to package it, it hasn't been saved so I'm going to actually cancel. It should have warned me. Normally it does but it probably didn't because I didn't actually make any changes. So we'll go ahead and do package and again it's telling me five use RGB color space so those five images, actually all the images in there I need to fix. So I made this uh, brochure before I realized that was a thing. So now I've learned the hard way from printers that they all need to be CMYK. So let's just go ahead and package it anyway. And again, it's naming it the name of the brochure. It's putting the world word folder after and it's going to the wrong folder. So I'm going to go ahead and find that. And I have like 85 different folders here. So brochure 2019. There we go. So you're going to put it in the right spot and it's going to create all those files, put, pull in all those fonts. So if we come back over here, now we have this folder. And if we go in here, we see those three different files, all the images. And you can see I only had to have the, the one logo image in there, even though it's used twice in the document. And then we have the two um, different fonts that, and this is the whole family of fonts because I use a lot of the Helvetica Noia in there. And so now this is what I would send to a printer. So I'd either just drop this folder in a Google Drive and give them a share link, or I would compress it and send this zip file to them for them to print with. 